I would consider myself a very social person. You know, I'm outgoing. I like going to different networking events, meeting new people. I don't know, it kind of helps me grow as an individual, like being able to see where others are coming from. Well, to an extent, when you are networking amongst different individuals, you are pressured to kind of have a certain persona, have a certain gall upon you when you go meet with someone else. So for example, some people call me Jay, and the others know me as Jalen. In a social setting, Jay is kind of like the person who's always on the scene, ready to get new information about people, ready to kind of like be adventurous and do whatever. But at the end of the day, as Jalen, I'm more reflective, I'm more calm, I'm more cautious of different situations. So it's kind of a toss up between which persona I don, depending on the setting. I would say one of my biggest secrets is that I'm afraid of complacency. I'm kind of afraid to be doing the same thing or like falling into a routine and becoming like monotonous. I don't want to wake up and then like, no, all right, I got to go to work. All right, I got to come home. I got to cook dinner. I, I just don't like routine. I like switching it up. So I would say like one of my deepest series that I'm afraid of like doing the same thing or like being the same person. So I'm always trying to reinvent myself, always trying to keep it fresh. I would say, yeah, I apply a certain amount of pressure to myself whenever I go to handle business or whenever I do something. It's just like, I like to make sure that I'm really honing my craft. I don't ever want to do something mediocre or do it halfway. I want to put my all into it, get critiqued on it, and then go back and see if I can do it even better the next time. I would honestly say the worst thing that ever happened to me was my ongoing fight with Charlotte School of Law. So back in 2015, um, I had taken a year off of graduation to, you know, prepare, take the LSAT, and then send in my applications because my overall goal is to be an attorney one day. And what happened was I was admitted into the school. I had really high hopes. I was excited. But once I was there, it was like the administration, the academics, the school's honesty with the federal government, everything just started falling through. I ended up losing thousands of dollars. I ended up trying to take the credit that I earned from that school and come back home to Maryland. And every school was telling me, oh no, nah, the way they modified your curriculum, none of your credits transfer. I had literally a week to decide what I was gonna do for the rest of my life based off of the heinous decisions of the school. And I would say, that was one of the worst things that ever happened to me because I had my dream of a lawyer being snatched like right from under my feet. Like it, it almost destroyed me, but I mean, I'm here today. In turn, I will also say that me going to Charlotte School Law is one of the best things that ever happened to me. It kind of instilled in me a new sense of maturity. Like I really had to learn how to self-reflect during that time, I questioned a lot of things. I was like, well, is it my performance? Is it something that I'm not doing? Is it something that I could be doing better? Is it something that's really meant to be? It, even though this is my passion, it made me really look at myself for who I am and the kind of man I am. Because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what's going on. If I decided to give up or I decided to quit, that was on me. So I just really had to sit there and reflect, and that reflection allowed me to grow. I became a lot more mature, I learned how to handle my finances better, I learned how to find plan A, B, and C, versus just heavily relying on A, and then coming up with a few, you know, kind of like, this is what I'll do next, or this is what I hope to do next plans. It just made me really like, slow down, embrace the season that I'm in, and just continue to push myself forward, no matter what was going on around me. I would say my phobias are letting the people around me down. It's kind of like I talk a big game. I tell everybody, I say, oh, I want to be the attorney general. I want to campaign. I want to get into politics. I want to be able to give back to my community. I want to be like a liaison for my people to those who are not like me outside of my culture. And I feel like one of my biggest phobias is 
that I, I do all this, I say all this, and then I don't accomplish it. And I have people that are around me invested in me and I let them down. One of the most uncomfortable things I had to do was honestly just be myself. I had to really kind of strip away what people thought of me or what I thought of myself or what I would tell myself in order to be comfortable with the skin I'm in. I really had to just embrace who I was as a person. Because at the end of the day, when you go in your room, it's not your friends, it's not social media, it's not parties, it's not uh, work or anything around you, it's just you. Like the LL Cool J lyrics, sometimes I sit in my room and then I stare at the wall and in the back of my mind I hear my conscience calling. It's literally I had to look at myself in the mirror and be like, who are you? Was it? What is it that you're doing all this for? What kind of man do you want to be or what kind of man do you hope to be? So that was a really tough decision because you go through life pretty much saying anything to yourself to help make it to the next day. You experience a death in a family, you're like, oh, I'll be all right, I'm strong. Or you take on what someone else says to you, and you're like, okay, well, because they said it, that must mean they can see something that I can't see, therefore I have that talent and I have that ability. When you strip all of that away and look at yourself on like a base level, no other distractions, no outside influences, you can see the kind of person you are and grow. And that's scary, because it's, it's hard to admit whether you're wrong, it's hard to admit that you don't know what you're talking about. It's hard to admit that y'all messed up this relationship or that relationship based on my behavior. It's hard to say, I need to work on these things. It's easier to just try to cover it up or act like it doesn't exist. So looking at yourself allows you to just kind of embrace everything at once and just prepare yourself for the next step. Change impacted my growth as an individual by teaching me that in different circumstances and different situations that my interpretation and someone else's interpretation is different. Growth is mutually beneficial between two people. And some of the situations I've been in this past year, like with um, my interactions with friends, my interactions with family, and so on and so forth, it showed me that sometimes when you go to do what's best for yourself, after really being there for someone or really going out your way to be a supportive element, people react negatively when you decide to, I mean, essentially reclaim your time. When you tell yourself, all right, I have to make this move in order to become a better man or a better peer, it becomes, oh, you're different or like, why can't things go back to the same or you're so difficult or you're not as readily available. So, I mean, change showed me that in order for me to grow as a man, especially a black man in this climate and then that everything's going on around me, like with our president, racial violence, police brutality, it showed me that if I don't do what's best for myself and I consistently surround myself with inhibitors, then I won't progress forward. I'll just keep susceptible myself to the same thing over and over again. What honestly motivates me is, I mean, my friends, my peers, like my family, like everybody that I have a consistent interaction with, they show me how much they believe in me. And it's beautiful. And part of that is my mother. So she's kind of like the linchpin in our family. If you don't know what a linchpin is, it's something that holds together everything. Like if you remove it, everything falls apart. So I mean, I've seen her go through different trials and tribulations uh, with deaths in the family and all that. And um, one key thing that sticks out to me was when my grandmother was, uh, was, was ill and she was on her deathbed. And like my grandma was a very, very, very special woman. Like she always kind to everybody, always told us to live, laugh, and love. And when she was uh, in hospice and they could no longer do anything for her, my mother still had work. She still had to take care of me and my little sister. She still had to take care of my father. She had to take care of the funeral arrangements. She had to take care of everything with my family. And I walked in one day and uh, it was like early in the morning. And I was like, Ma, you getting ready to go to work? Like, you're not gonna, you're not gonna take off with everything that's going on with grandma. And she looked at me and she was like, 
No, like I still have a lot of things I uh, need to get done. Like the world doesn't stop just because bad things are happening. And while she did give herself time to grieve, like all I could think is damn, like that's powerful. Like you're, you're the person that brought you into this world is on her deathbed and you're still moving and you're still carrying all this weight on your shoulders. So I took that and that's one of my main means of motivation. It doesn't really matter what's going on around me. I'll continue to push myself. And like my mother and again my family and my peers were like some of the strongest motivators behind me. I feel like one of the greatest epiphanies I've had is do not disturb. Some people call it just like a button on your phone, but I say do not disturb is a lifestyle. When you put yourself on do not disturb mode, whatever outside distraction, or whatever is coming to bother you, can't get in. I have the option of saying, okay, when I silence everything, I don't distract myself with social media, I don't distract myself with drama between friends, I don't distract myself with women at parties, I say, okay, I'm gonna handle my business first. I'm gonna get this schoolwork done. And then when I go off and do not disturb, I can check, I can say, okay, somebody wants to hang out. Uh, nah, I can't really do that right now. I can say, oh, community service opportunity. Let me schedule that in. Oh, wait, mm, go out, brunch, have fun. I might need a little bit of that. It's, it allows you to really take a step back and get rid of the outside noise when you're pursuing the things that you want to do. I mean, it just helps you overall be better. And it's kind of like, it separates you from the constant need to check or feel like you had to be plugged in or know every little thing that's going on. When while you're grinding, while you're focusing, things are gonna stay the same. You're gonna be the only thing changing. I would say one thing that most people don't know about me is that while I do seem to like fly off the handle or be like a wild guy, I'm very, very, very observant of my surroundings and observant of what everything is going on around me. I pay attention to people and their mannerisms, whether it be whether I'm out, whether it be they're telling me about a problem. I pay attention to the nuances in language. It helps me gain a greater sense of who it is that I'm truly interacting with and what, is it, and what is it that they're doing or what role they play in my life. And that observation allows me to cut people off that aren't adding to my growth, bring people into my circle that are gonna enhance me as a man, or it allows kind of like a, sen a sense of self-reassurance that like, all right, so you're on the right path. These are the individuals that you're surrounding yourself with and this is what you need in order to grow. I mean, it's kind of hard to solidify just one thing, but if I could say one thing to my younger self, it would be you can kill them with kindness, but don't kill yourself in the process. We live in a very selfish world where no one is altruistic. Everyone has their own self-interest in mind. It's never a bigger than me moment. While that's going on, maintain the pure heart that you have, continue to help people, regardless of circumstance, regardless of what's going on, regardless of whether or not you're draining yourself with personal time you could have, but you have to draw the line somewhere. You have to make sure that you're also doing what's best for you while you're trying to help other people. So again, you can kill them with kindness, but don't kill yourself in the process. I haven't attained my best self. And growth is an ever going journey. Nobody's perfect. If somebody was perfect, then you would be able to figure out what formula they used in order to get the way they were at. That means you would have a bunch of people walking around with no flaws, no issues, no nothing going on. But we live in a world where we don't have that. So, I mean, I like the progression that I've made, but I know it's more things that I could build upon and, you know, enhance it for myself. I could fine tune my focus. I could be a little more intuitive reader. I could, you know, slow down a little bit with the partying and the fast-paced lifestyle. But it's just a constant journey, man. And if you don't want to acknowledge it, it's a constant journey, 
and you think that materialistic change or you getting a new job or you just leveling up quote unquote is you being the person that you need to be and growing into the person you need to be. You need to do a real self reevaluation because it's never over. The race is won by the swift. Know about a ballad of strong, but by he who endures to the end. Gotta keep going.